Hello my shimmering stars today I Shorya Grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of PW English so students today we are going to start with our new chapter that is going to be metallurgy and today is the lecture number 1 under our batch excellence batch i hope so students you have seen the previous lecture and all the topics were clear to you so today we are going to initiate with this very new fresh chapter so before on going to this chapter let me tell you one thing students let no one steal your dreams let no one steal your dreams let no one tear you apart the burning of ambition that fires the drive inside your heart let no one steal your dreams let no one tell you that you can't let no one hold you back let no one tell you that you won't set your sights and keep them fixed set your sights and keep them fixed let no one steal your dreams your only limit is the sky so students with this quote we shall start our today's segment with a beautiful smile so today we are going to initiate with the topic metallurgy so what are the segments ma'am that we are going to cover in this particular session see basically today is going to be the introductory seg uh, segment and we are going to understand about the term what is metallurgy <laughs> what are metals what are ores we are going to understand about these va uh, various basic terms in the chapter metallurgy you shall be seeing this chapter as you know the general extraction and the isolation of the metals okay so today we are going to start with the topic metallurgy metallurgy is basically the extraction now extraction of whom extraction of metals in their pure form how can we extract metal in their pure form is referred to as the term metallurgy great now students in this particular topic today we need to understand the basic terms like minerals ores gang and slag they are really very important topics okay so first of all if i talk about what do you refer to as minerals so minerals are basically in which we can find some percentage of metals in it they are referred to as minerals okay now see the compounds of metals what i told you just right now i told you that minerals are those substances which contains some percentage of metals in them great so that is what is written over here if you read it out the compounds of metals okay mixed with mixed with what now some kind of impurities will also be present over there so the compounds of metals mixed with soil limestone sand and rocks are referred to as what are known as minerals okay now comes the next term that we need to understand is about ores so if you want to write more about minerals you can write substances which contains percentage of metal in it some percentage of metals in it in other terms we can say it, they are referred to as minerals now coming about ores what are basically ores okay so we need to understand about the term see metals are commercially extracted from minerals okay or i would say through minerals the metals that are extracted that are referred to as ores so that is what is written over here metals are commercially extracted from minerals at low cost and minimum effort now these minerals from which metals can be extracted are referred to as ores okay so the minerals you can even write in in short form the minerals through which through which metals can be extracted metals can be extracted now students this chapter is somewhat basically kind of a theoretical chapter you you will be understanding various terms you will be learning about various processes that are involved so it is a kind of you know a theoretical segment now moving to the next part is about gang 
ओके ना वॉट यू रेफर टू एज गैंग सी बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स वेन यू आर डिगिंग समथिंग एंड यू फाइंड अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ अ मिनरल सो दैट मिनरल इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन द प्योर फॉर्म देर शैल बी सम सब्सटांसिस लाइक सैंड लाइक क्ले दैट आर दैट आर प्रेजेंट नियर बाय दैट यू नो मिनरल सो बेसिकली दैट इज रेफर टू एज इम्प्योरिटीज that means the substances other than the pure form that surrounds that particular substance is referred to as something impurity example i am talking about is sand clay okay quartz all these are what gang particles so let us see a substance which is added to the charge in the furnace to remove the gang is known as flux now this is another term flux but yes i have told you about the term gang if you need to write what is a gang it is basically the impurities the impurities that surrounds the impurities that surrounds the ores are referred to as are referred to as gang are referred to as what gang the impurities that surround the ores are referred to as gang an example for them you can write it as sand you can mention it as clay okay quartz etc they all are gang particles or i would say the impurities that surround them now as i've told you there is one more term over here that is referred to as flux now what is what is flux basically flux basically is i would say the substance that is added so that we can remove the impurities now see a substance added in uh, to the ore so that all the impurities get vanished away is referred to as flux it is quite easy it is quite easy so it is basically substance substance added in order to in order to remove remove the impurities in order to remove the impurities or gang is it clear is it clear that is referred to as your what flux i want you all to write all these lines in your ncert along with the lines which i am mentioning over there so it will give you a very quick recap while you are revising all the segments okay kindly write it down students <coughs> kindly write it down okay now as i've told you that there is one more definition that is about slag let us write that also over here let us understand what do you refer to as slag also basically you know slag is something which is lighter than metals okay so you can write over here slag is something which is lighter which is lighter than metals and basically it if it is lighter than metals then it have a tendency to float okay so it floats over metals floats very easily this is about slag moreover if you need to understand about slag slag prevents further oxidation this also you can mention over here it prevents it prevents further oxidation it prevents further oxidation this is all about slag i would say so now we have understood few basic terms over here with regard to the topic metallurgy that what basically is metallurgy initially if i have to tell you initially if we need to re revise that what we have basically done over here so see the very first thing is about metallurgy metallurgy is defined as the process that is used for the extraction of metals in their which form students in their which form in their pure form ma'am great now after the students we understood about the term minerals now if i talk about what do you refer to as minerals so minerals are those substances which contains quite amount of percentage of metals in them okay so substances which contains some percentage of metals in it is referred to as your minerals and if you want even you want to write the proper definition you can even write the compounds of metals mixed with soil limestone sand and rocks are referred to as what minerals now the next term came about ores 
what do you refer to as ores ma'am ores are the minerals through which the metals can be extracted now see this chapter is all about the extraction the isolation of the elements right so here we shall be talking again and again about the extraction and the isolation process so again next term was about gang that means about impurity so if i talk about gang particles the impurities that surrounds the ores are referred to as the gang the impurities that surround the ores are referred to as what is referred to as gang other than this we understood about the term flux flux is basically a substance which is added in order to remove the gang particles or to remove the impurities okay now students metallurgy deals with the process of purification of metals and with the formation of alloys okay we shall be understanding about these concepts other than this we got to uh, learn about slag what is a slag slag it is lighter than metal it floats and also it prevents further oxidation this key point is really very important now we have got to understand about the very basic terms with regard to the metallurgy now let us move on to the further part now in your ncrt students in your ncrt you will be observing this particular table you will be observing this particular table let us see that what does this table explains us this is basically the principal ores of some important metals this is basically the principal ores of some important metals such as if we talk about the metal aluminium now it has certain ores such as it has bauxite okay which is an important i will be uh, putting a tick mark over there of who's you need to remember now see it contains two kinds of ores one is bauxite and other is kaolinite which is a form of a clay and they have been provided with the composition over here so you need to learn about bauxite moreover if i talk about iron see in the case of iron uh, hematite magnetite and uh, siderite and iron pyrites all of the four are really very important and they have been provided with a certain composition now this is basically from your ncrt from where from your ncrt so you can even open up your ncrts and you can just cross check and you can learn over them so hematite basically its composition is fe2o3 if i talk about magnetite students its composition is fe3o4 if i talk about uh, siderite its composition is feco3 if i talk about iron pyrite its composition is fes2 is it clear to you people great now moving on to the part that is about the metal copper now with regard to copper students see one is cuprite another is malachite they both are really important you might be seeing one of the questions in the upcoming uh, you know few minutes only you will be observing a question from this topic also so basically they have certain formulas such as if i talk about copper pyrites they have a composition of cu fes2 if i talk about malachite it has a composition of cu cu you know this is really important again i'm putting a huge tick mark over here so that you can remember it again and again if i talk about malachite its composition is all about cu co3 dot cu bracket start oh twice then i talk about copper glands uh okay cuprite sorry cuprite is also really important whose composition is cu2o and if i talk about copper glands over here students its composition is cu2s clear okay now moving on to the next uh, uh, metal if i talk about is about zinc now see if i talk about zinc over here this is really very important which is referred to as zinc blend or i would say safflerite its composition is zns zns and this is also important then comes calamine this is important kindly put double tick over here see double tick on malachite calamine and here hematite and magnetite even said right also see iron ones all are important all are important if i talk about calamine over here its composition is zn co3 zn co3 then comes zincite which is zno its composition is zno clear so kindly put a star mark on the, on the ones which i have told you to just read once twice and thrice so that it will be easy for you to understand <coughs> okay students now moving on to that next segment that is occurrence of metals where does these metals occur we need to understand see if i talk about the abundance or the occurrence of metals initially i'll be talking about aluminium then i'll be telling about iron so if i talk about aluminium aluminium is the most abundant metal now we need to understand it is the third most abundant element in earth's crust now this is really very important which holds about 8.3 percentage approximate weight 
okay by weight and it's it is a major component of many igneous minerals including mica and clays okay so more about if you need to understand many gems gemstones are impure forms of al2o3 and impurities range from chromium to cobalt okay so basically what you need to understand about aluminium that it is most abundant it is the third most abundant and it has 8.3 percentage by weight moreover if you need to understand then you can see that it is a major component uh, in certain minerals including mica and clay great now i shall be talking about next one that is about iron as i've told you if i talk about iron iron is the second most abundant metal in the earth's crust third most is aluminium you are seeing and iron is the second most now talking more about iron it forms a variety of compounds and their various uses make it a very important element due to its usage okay it is one of the essential elements in the biological ecosystem you know you can which you can observe okay as well now now students comes about the metallurgical processes you need to understand about the term which is referred to as metallurgy metallurgical metallurgical process c basically there are three kinds of processes okay hydro metallurgy process second comes out to be pyro and third comes out to be electro hydro metallurgical metallurgy process pyro metallurgical process and electro metallurgical process now let us understand one by one see if we are using water in order uh, we are using water for extraction that is referred to as hydro metallurgical process when water is used when water is used for the extraction process for the extraction process it is referred to as it is referred to as hydrometallurgy or hydrometallurgical process clear if i talk about pyrometallurgical process or pyrometallurgy process it is referred to as when heat is used when heat is used for extraction then it is referred as pyro metallurgical process or pyro metallurgy now when i'm talking about electro metallurgical process or electro metallurgy where we are using electrolysis okay that means anode and cathode and that all the processes that we see in electrochemistry so when electrolysis is used for extraction is referred to as electro metallurgy or electro metallurgical processes so these are the various metallurgical processes that you see in the chapter metallurgy kindly write it down students so that we can move on to our next part <coughs> kindly write it down so that we can move on to our next segment let us see now okay 
so students now we shall be talking about how can we extract and we can isolate the metals basically see uh, the extraction and the isolation of metals from the ores involves basically three major steps do remember this the extraction and the isolation of metals from its ores will hold the major three steps the initial one is the concentration of the ore initial one is the concentration of ore which we shall be understanding all about today here basically what happens we are having ore and we basically crush that ore in its powdered form and then that ore uh, is basically concentrated so you are going to check the concentration of the ore and there are various certain methods in order to see that great now the second following major steps that we shall be observing over here will be about isolation of the metal from its concentrated ore now when we are getting concentrated ore initially we had only ore what i am saying is initially we have only ore but we are crushing that ore into its powdered form and that powdered form is now concentrated and after we obtain the concentrated ore my dear students then we shall be you know isolating that metal from its concentrated ore we'll getting the metal from that its concentrated ore and after that students we are going to purify it we are going to clean it out the metal and we shall be getting the pure metal so are you getting the process how they they will occur initially concentration will be done and before concentration it shall be converted into its powdered form now moving on to the very first part that is the concentration of ores if i talk about concentration of ore see removal of unwanted materials that means removal of impurities or i would say the gang particles right so the removal of unwanted materials such as sand clays etc from its ores is known as concentration dressing or benefaction okay now these uh, this is really important i'll be showing you one of the question over here in which you are going to see these three terms are being used in a question and you'll be getting so easy question so that's why i'm saying this is a kind of a theoretical segment that you need to just understand and open up your ncrts and you can write in the major key points over there or underline the major key points over there and just look up to the structures in your ncrt that would help you out very easily so as i am saying that initially we are going to do the concentration of ores so for that what we require we require ore ore we getting in a proper manner we need to crush it in powdered form now we have to remove all the impurities that are present outside it so in order to that removal basically process is referred to as concentration dressing or i would say benefication it involves several steps it will be having several steps and selection of these steps will depend upon the differences in their physical properties you know which step will occur first or which step will occur second they will depend upon the nature in its physical properties of the compound of the metal that is present and that of the gang gang here is what impurities that means you shall be observing what you shall be observing all about ores and all about impurities and based upon the physical properties of the ores and the impurities you shall be doing the concentration you shall be doing the steps now let us see that what are the steps involved in the concentration of ores so if i talk about this topic the very first initial uh, process that we see in the concentration of ores is hydraulic washing it is what it is hydraulic washing now basically what happens in hydraulic washing students i let you know we will be having the powdered ore form in a kind of a beaker somewhat and we will be uh, putting like an inclined surface over here just as in like this okay we will be having all the powdered form over here now based upon the gravity of the ore and the impurity this process shall take place what will happen see initially we have kept the powdered over here so the one which have more gravity will settle down and the one with the less gravity will move downward to this surface and will be collected separately so this is about hydraulic washing let me tell you this is based upon the difference in gravities as i've told you it is based upon what it is based upon the difference in upon difference in gravities now students we will be comparing two basic terms over here difference in gravity in terms of ores and in terms of impurities in ores and impurities okay in gravity of ores and impurities 
Now understand this thing over here. Impurities in other terms is referred to as gang particles. So what it is? It is based upon the difference in gravities of the ore and the gang particles. It is therefore a type of gravity separation technique. That means the in this process what actually happens? See this. In one such process, an upward stream of running water is used. Now what we are going to do? We are going to keep it in a beaker, the ore and the particles, the impurities. We are going to put a stream of water over here. And we'll let it down. And some will go down while some will remain over there. See what will happen. We have said that in one such process, in this particular process, an upward stream of running water is used to wash the powdered ore. Now we shall be using again and again the powdered ore, not the initial uh, ore that we have gathered. No, powdered form, the crushed form of ore. We shall be taking that. The lighter particles are washed away. And the heavier ones are left behind. What will happen? I told you. The one which have more gravity or the one which are heavier in nature will settle over there only, here only. But the one which are lighter in nature, they shall be coming down. They shall settle down like this. They, they shall come like this down. While the heavier ones will be left behind. So this is about the hydraulic washing. Hydro here refers to, hydra here refers to as water. So this is basically a kind of a hint that is being provided that you shall be using the water over here in order to do the concentration of ore. Now what is the concentration of ore? Concentration is removal of the unwanted particles. Unwanted sand, unwanted clay, all of these removal is referred to as concentration. And how we have removed it? We have removed it through hydraulic washing. Great. I want students to you kindly mark these important key points. And if you want to draw the diagram also in the NCRT at the sidebose position, you can draw that. You can go for it. Great. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, let us see the next method that we have with us. Next is magnetic separation. Now, this is also really quite, you know, easy. See, here we will be seeing the magnetic properties again of two things about ores and impurities. Now, what it will take place, see, when we are here, we are going to use a roller. Okay. Here we are going to use a roller and we are going to rotate it out. So, the one which is rotated in the direction of magnetic field will show magnetic properties and the one which, you know, moves away from the, you know, the roller's direction. That means away from the direction of the magnetic field will show non-magnetic behavior. So, here what happens? We are taking a roller and we are applying magnetic field over there. We shall be seeing the direction to which it will lead. If it lead, leads towards the direction of the magnetic field, yes, it, it has magnetic properties. But if it is moving away from that direction, that means it is non-magnetic in nature. And so, when you are using ore and impurities, one of them will move towards the magnetic field and one of them will move away from the magnetic field. And so, we can separate it out and we can remove the unwanted particles. So, let us read from the NCRT. What does it say? It says that it is based upon the difference in magnetic properties of the ore components. It is based on what? Ma'am, it is based upon the difference in magnetic properties properties. In the previous case, when we were talking about hydraulic washing, we were talking about gravity as the major key component. But over here, magnetic properties, my dear students, is the major key component that is responsible for, you know, letting us know about the ore and the impurity, for separating them all together. Now see, it is based upon the difference in the magnetic properties of the ore component. If either the ore or the gang, okay, is capable of being attracted by a magnetic field, then such separations are carried out. That is what I am saying is, one of them will move towards the magnetic field and the another one will move away from the magnetic field. Now see, the ground ore is carried on a conveyor belt which uh, passes over a magnetic roller. This is what I told you. We take a magnetic roller, we apply the magnetic field and we will be observing the directions. One of them will move towards the direction uh, of the magnetic, another one will move opposite to the directions. Hence, they both will get separated. Who? Ore and the impurities. Is it clear? Is it clear? Shall we move on to the next part? If it is clear, then we shall move on to the next part. If it is clear, then we shall move on to the next part. Okay, so the next part is for froth flotation process or froth flotation method. Now, this is really very important method. Froth flotation method. Okay, now see, here you need to understand the quite basic things. This method has been used. Now, I shall show you one diagram. 
This is the diagram for froth flotation process. First of all, see the diagram, then we'll understand about it. See what is happening over here. Basically, this is the rotating pedal. This is the rotating pedal. Then we have this as our substance. Here we have mineral froth. Now, froth is basically, in Hindi, if you say it is basically jhag banana. Okay, that is what is froth. So, basically what is happening over here, here is the air that is circulated and we have a pedal over here. The pedal draws an up and here it stills it out. Here we are going to see, see the powdered form of ore. Here we initially will be having the powdered form of ore. Okay, initially we shall be having the powdered form. Now, let us understand that what basically happens in this process over here. If I talk, this method has been used for the removing gauge. Gauge, that means what? That means impurities. It is basically used in order to remove the impurities. Now, from whom? For sulphide ores. Now, till now you have seen many of the cases, but this particular method is used for which ores, ma'am? For sulphide ores. You need to keep in mind, this is basically used for which ores? For only and only sulphide ores. Now, in this particular process, in this process, a suspension of the powdered ore. Again, I have told you, when we are doing concentration process, we require powdered form of ore. We don't require the solid form. We require, that means the exact form. No, we need to crush it out. We need to find the powdered form. Now, in this process, a suspension of the powdered ore is made with water by mixing it with water. To it, collectors and froth stabilizers are added. Now, why we are using froth stabilizers? See what happens. When froth is made, when jhag is basically made, it will move on to the upper direction. Why? Because see, in this particular diagram, if you observe, when it is made, no, when this pedal will rotate, froth will generate, this is the froth that is generated, it will move on to the upper direction. So, we require a stabilizer so that we can stabilize it out. And here basically students, we use pine oil. Do remember, here we use pine oil. Now let us read, let us read uh, what is written over here. This method has been used for removing gauge, that means removing impurities from the sulphide ores. Got it. In this process, a suspension of the powdered ore is made. We are going to create a suspension of the powdered ore with water. To it, collectors and froth stabilizers are added. One is the collectors that we add over here and another one is the froth stabilizers that we add. Now, question can generally ask from the collectors. Collectors such as pine oil, questions are generally asked from this concept. Collectors such as pine oil, fatty acids, anthates, etc. they are added which enhances the non-wettability of the mineral particles. Now, what happens in froth flotation process? Basically, see what will happen when ore is present in the you know base section when when we are going to rotate it out ore will get attached to the oil particle and it will move in the upper direction and the impurities they will get mixed up with the water ore will get attached with the oil particles will move in the upper direction while the impurities will mix up with the water this is what is happening over here see over here what it is written it enhances the non wettability Okay, of the mineral particles and froth stabilizers, they can ask you which are the froth stabilizers that you use. You either can use aniline or you can use chrysoles over there, which stabilizes the froth, the jhag that is created. The mineral particles become wet by oils. I told you the same thing. I told you the same thing that when you are going to take the min, sorry, that when you are going to take the mineral particles over here, it will get attached with the oil particles. It will get attached with the oil particles. So, see, the mineral particles become wet by oils while the gauge particles by water. When the mineral particles become wet by oil, they will move in the upward direction creating froth and the impurities will get mixed up with the water. They will get wet by water. This line is really very, very important. This line, fine oil one line and this one. You need to learn these all things. You need to learn the collectors. You need to learn the froth stabilizers that are used over here. Now see, a rotating pedal agitates the mixture and draws air in it. It will create air in it. As a result, froth is formed, okay, which carries the mineral particles, right? The froth is light and is skimmed off. It is then dried for the recovery of ore particles. Very simple technique. When you are rotating the pedal, the mineral ores, they get attached to the oil particles and froth is created due to the presence of air. It will move in the upward direction and the impurities will be left over with water. You can separate out it. How you will take that froth outside and keep it at the side and then you will dry it out and you will get it. 
Great, yes, ma'am. So this is basically the process. Let us read more about fruit fermentation process. The mineral particles become wet by oils, while the gauge uh, particles by water, which I have already told you. Here till here we have read, right? Sometimes it is impossible to separate two sulphide. Now this is also important. This paragraph is also very important. Kindly understand it. Sometimes it is impossible to separate the two sulphide ores by adjusting the proportion of oil to water or by using depressants. Okay, it creates a problem over there. For example, they have given you a case. In the case of ore containing ZNS and PBS. Now we have an ore which contains ZNS and PBS with it. The depressant used is NaCN. Now this question is also generally asked. Here which depressant is used? Ma'am, NaCN is used. It is selectively, okay, it is selectively and it prevents ZNS from coming to the froth. But allow PBS to come with the froth. Now how will it separate when you are using this particular depressant? Only ZNS will combine with oil particles but not PBS. ZNS will combine and will create a froth and will move in the upward direction, will be get separated and the PBS will be left behind. So here which depressant is used? NaCN kind of depressant is used. Is it clear to you people? I want you all to mark it out in your NCRTs so that we can move on to our next part. Kindly mark this in your NCRT students. Okay. Let us see the next part. Now students come some of, some of the questions that you need to, you know, solve it out with respect to the topic. We are left with only one method with regard to the concentration of force and then we shall be proceeding to the another methods. Great. Okay. So let us start with the very first question of our today is the removal of the unwanted materials like sand, clays, etc. from the ore is known as dash, dash or dash. A option is concentration, dressing and benefition. B is separation, refining and gauge. C is magnetic separation, purification and gauge. While D is washing, refining and amalgamation. I want you all to solve this question. I am giving you a minute and then we are going to cross check out it. Here they are saying the removal of unwanted materials like sand, clays. What is this process known as? Now I guess you can easily tell the answers. Yes ma'am. So the answer over here will be option number A. The removal of the unwanted material is known as what? It is known as ma'am concentration. Then is dressing either you can call it or you can call it benification. Is it clear? Is it clear? If you want to see this answer over here, it is written over here. See, see this initial lines. The removal of the unwanted materials from the ore is referred to as concentration, dressing or benefication. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, let us see the next question that we have with us. Which of the following ores cannot be concentrated by magnetic separation? Which of the following ores cannot be concentrated by magnetic separation? A is hematite, B is malachite, C is magnetite and D is siderite. Kindly solve this question. I am giving you a minute. <coughs> now students, let me tell you. If you want to understand that which of the following cannot be concentrated by magnetic one, so its answer is going to be malachite because it is not a magnetic ore. It is not a magnetic ore. If you see the table over here, if you see the table over here, see, if I see a malachite, if I talk about malachite, it's basically composition is Cu, Cu3, dot Cu, OH, thrice. So, this is not a magnetic ore. Hence, our answer is going to be malachite. Okay, so it will not be separated by magnetic separation. Not a magnetic ore. Okay. Or you can write cannot be separated by the magnetic separation technique. Great. Okay, ma'am. Let us see the next question that we have. Now, this is a kind of a theoretical question that you will solve and you will automatically get what exactly they are asking you for. For which of the following goes, froth flotation method is used for concentration. A is hematite, B is zinc blend, C is magnetite, while D is carnalite. Now, you have one minute again. Students, kindly think about what is a froth flotation process and you will get your answer over there. Kindly just think about it. So, 
स्टूडेंट्स दे आर आस्किंग विच बेसिकली इज यूज सो जिंक ब्लैंड इज बेसिकली यूज ओवर हेयर ओके विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इन दिस टेबल विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इन दिस टेबल अबाउट जिंक ब्लैंड See, zinc blend or sapphireolite is basically ZNS, which is used. Now, why I am I have written zinc blend because it contains sulphide ore. It contains sulphide ore, and for a froth flotation process is used for sulphide ore. Yes, yes, ma'am, it is used for sulphide ore. That's why the answer comes out to be what? The answer comes out to be zinc blend because zinc blend contains sulphide ore in it, and sulphide ore basically is used for the froth flotation process. Let us see the next answer. Let us see the next question. The next question is the oil used as frothing agent in froth flotation process is A option is coconut oil, B option is castor oil, C option is a palmitic oil, while D option is pine oil. So I have already told you that yes, you use some collectors such as pine oil in order to see the froth flotation process. So your answer is going to be option number D. Answer comes out to be your option number D. Is it clear to you people? Yes, ma'am. Let us see the next question that we have with us. If I talk about the very next question, the question is common impurities present in bauxite are. Now you have this particular question. A option here is CuO, B is ZnO, C is CaO, while D is SiO2. They are asking the common impurities or the common gods that you can talk about present in the bauxite are. Kindly solve this question. I'll let you know the answer over here. So the answer over here, students, comes out to be option number B. So when you are going to read this particularly, you are going to understand all of these concepts over here. Okay. Now, students. Now, students, let me take a question for you all. <coughs> okay. So your today's homework, students, is going to be. So your today's homework question, students. Read NCRT because it is really very important if you'll read NCRT and solve NCRT back exercise. As this is an introductory segment with regard to the chapter metallurgy, where we covered our initial topic, the very first topic. Now we shall be meeting in the next lecture, and we shall be understanding about the next topic of ours. As I've told you, that basically there are three methods of students that we learn over here. You know, in this uh, extraction process. So one of the initial method was concentration of ores, which we have already covered, and the very next two methods we shall be covering in our next segment. Right? So students, we shall meet in the next lecture. Till then, keep smiling. keep learning thank you so much and have a good day